Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we've got some dwarves. Dwarven dimorphism going on. Actually, what we have are some bags of new Stonehaven dwarves. So Stonehaven kind of got their start doing dwarves way back when on Kickstarter and recently unleashed a whole slew of new models. So we're going to put our painted dwarves over here to the side so we can get a good look at some of the new models. And I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I probably should have gone and checked online as to what their official titles were, but I didn't. I'm just going in blind here. I know what a couple of them are. So, Stonehaven's been really cool in that they tend to have very unique takes on jobs and characters that you wouldn't normally associate with typical fantasy tropes, I guess. So I've always appreciated and enjoyed that, and I did not get in on their original Dwarven Kickstarter, but I have quite a few of their other races that they've done, and I, I tend to like, you know, the weirder stuff. And lizards. Let's just get that cleared out of the way here. But the dwarves just had so much charming character to them, I'm like, I have to get a couple of these just for the heck of it. So without further ado. So first up, we have our pirate, or a buccaneer, I don't know which, but he is absolutely appropriately dressed with a big hook. Peg leg, blunderbuss, eye patch, the whole nine yards. Stuff in his beard there, it looks like. Probably have to give those a good paint job to see what they're like. And I'm sure you're curious how they stack up with other models. That's why I grabbed a Mantic and slew of GW models. We're going to use the Cogsmith since he's probably the most normal dwarf I have left. The Fire Slayers and... Caradon don't really. So this guy's kind of leaned over a bit. They're a little bit shorter, obviously, but like I said, they have a lot of interesting charm to them, and they're not your typical dwarves either, which is something that I really appreciate. So that's the pirate slash buccaneer type. Next up, we have what I'm assuming is supposed to be some kind of a necromancer type. She's got that hand, maybe some kind of a druid. Ooh. One of my big complaints with a lot of the Stonehaven models was their early sculpts were very flat, very 2D feeling, whereas these ones obviously have a lot more life and movement and fluidity to them, so that's kind of cool. Hopefully she will stand up better, as you can see. I mean, she's pretty much in scale with that Mantic Dwarf. Obviously our Cogsmith here is a little bit more heavily armored, so take that for what it is. I want to say this dwarf was the Grey Warden, or maybe I'm just thinking of Dragon Age, which could be both cases. His sword was a little bent when I first got him, and you know, he's got some nice stoic looking armor there. No, I thought he had an eye patch. It's just the shadows playing tricks on my eyes there. Very dramatic as he stands with the wind blowing purposely behind him. It's a little bit more closer in line to our GW friend, but definitely wouldn't be out of place with the Mantic one. I kind of wish I had some Reaper ones handy, but I'm not a huge fan of the Reaper dwarves. I'm assuming this is some sort of a cleric type, and I do appreciate the fact that Stonehaven makes some nice-looking girl models for a lot of their races. Usually, girl dwarves are not the most interesting models, but I have enjoyed theirs. So... A little bit more diminutive, but still cool nonetheless. Maybe he's a monk or something. I'm pretty sure she's a priest or a cleric. But, you know, she probably could work for just about any job. So that's one of the nice things about these. Yeah, they have defined roles that they've been given, but they can function as just about anything. Like this guy. He is a dwarven barber because... Why not? That's what we need, our dwarf. Look look at that pompadour. That is one styling dwarf. They should have done something fancier with the beard. But he's got a pair of scissors and a big carving blade and all kinds of tools of the trade hanging up all over him. And a mirror, because why not? I have no idea how I'm going to paint that mirror. I probably should go look for some tutorials. I know I was already pestering Barzam for that, but he didn't have much to help with. Except go watch GW videos. No, we'll, we'll take a look. So... He's a good-sized dwarf, especially when he stands up. And again, he's a lot more three-dimensional than a lot of their earlier ones. I think the elves were probably the most guilty of the flatness. The gnomes, too, but yeah. He's definitely got a little bit more oomph volume to him. So that was one of their war bands. So the whole idea was that you could order individual models or you can have them in groups of about five. 
The next one was way more interesting than I thought. Except for the barber. The barber was awesome. So, probably a close second in terms of fantasy races for me behind lizards or reptiles of any type are mechanical ones. So this is a, looks like a female dwarven warforged, which is a very particular subset of races, obviously, but she's pretty cool looking. If it is a she, it's a robot. I don't know if robots have gender necessarily, but then it's kind of cool. It's not something you see every day, and that's one of the things I really like about Stonehaven's models. As I keep saying every time I put a new one down. A little bit shorter. She has a female one, though. Not that that matters much. This is... Barzam told me she was supposed to be a machinist. She's got, like, a mechanical arm. To me, it's just an awesome-looking monk. But she's definitely looking like she's up for a brawl. Which is kind of cool. And again, the details, I, I've backed enough of Stonehaven's campaigns and picked up enough over the years. Mostly more human-sized models, but they really do have a lot of charm and character to them. In fact, I have a bunch of their halflings that I really, really need to get around to painting. Maybe I'll do that next week. So again, and then we have... I don't know how else to describe this guy, but as a dwarven mobster slash fixture. And we're going to have to clean up the gun there a little bit. But he is definitely dressed for some mob-like action there. Again, not your typical dwarf. And with a model like this, you could probably squeeze him into quite a few different games. So that's always a plus, too. Then we have a, another Dwarven Warforge type, and I, I like the look with the chains for the beard. That's pretty cool. Obviously, we got to clean him up a little bit. Cannon looks very War Machine-like. Very Kador. Should I paint him red? I don't know if that would be appropriate. Because painting them all silver and mechanical colors is going to be kind of boring. I love me my motherland when it comes to privateer stuff. Pretty nice looking weapon there. But the best one of the bunch are Dwarven Boracho. <laughs> Look at this guy. How many bandito type dwarves do you have on your tabletop? I mean, you could probably... I'm thinking he's probably going to end up in the Shadows of Brimstone game because he's just so ridiculous and he's going to have to be an outlaw. Because why not? I'm going to have fun painting his sarape, though, and his sombrero. I think he's going to have to have very festive colors. So he's, he's going to be probably the first one of the bunch I paint. Or to further clarify, he'll probably be the first one of the bunch that I start to paint, get about 75-80% done, and then leave him for weeks on end. He definitely looks like he can fit in with his buddies there. And as a nice bonus, and I'm hoping that these are going to be available too later on, because this campaign unfortunately took a little bit longer than Stonehaven had hoped, they included a couple bonus models, and I believe these will be available later on on their website. So we had an adventuring human, and again, like most of Stonehaven stuff, there is a lot of charm and character to it. They are not your usual, you know, square-jawed, super heroic models. Do I have a human nearby? Yeah. Probably help if it was in focus, right? There we go. And then, in addition to that, we have a little tiefling model. How do I know she's a tiefling? Well, she's got horns and a tail. Kind of cool. Kind of different. Honestly, I really would like to see Stonehaven continue with their weird, more interesting and exotic races. I mean, dwarves are cool, and i got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of dwarves. I, yeah, I know I've got painted fire slayers, and I've painted my fair share of Arcanauts and Caradron guys and boats, but these just are a whole lot different. They don't look like everything else, and that's probably my biggest complaint about companies like Reapers. Yeah, they make technically sound and solid-looking models, but they're just kind of the typical tropey dwarves. Or at least modern trophy dwarves. We don't have the kind of droopy, big coned hats like in the olden days when I was a kid. So you can see just with everybody here on the table, there is a lot of variety in terms of both shapes, sizes, weapons, characters, style, all of that. And um, I mean, for they're just dwarves. So that's pretty cool. But it's not as cool as some of the crazier stuff that um, 
Stonehaven's come out with, like Modron Adventurers or Fox People, not Fox People, Fox People have been done, Owl People. And they're ravens, and they're gripply, which are little tiny, I don't know, I mean really tiny frog people. They've got all kinds of interesting stuff. So I'll put a link down below for Stonehaven's website. Give them a look, because they do have quite a few stuff. And these should be available fairly soon, if not already by the time I am posting this. Hopefully even sooner. And definitely keep an eye on their social media, because they love teasing out new concepts and designs before each and every one of their Kickstarters comes out. And they're good folks. So, with that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. And I'd like to say thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you back here again soon. Bye for now.